China has broken yet another record. This time it has built the largest diameter tunnel in just 110 days. Known as the Jinan Huanggang Tunnel, this marvel is located 100 feet below the Yellow River. With a diameter of 56 feet, it not only has the biggest diameter of any tunnel in China, but is also the biggest of its kind to be completed in such a short time. The only question is, how did they pull this off so quickly? This is the city of Jinan. It's the capital of China's Shandong province. Jinan city is divided by the big and mighty Yellow River into two halves. And that is a problem. China had to urgently find a way to connect the north and south parts of the city, especially since Jinan is populated by 9.4 million residents and in the future, millions more. China had two options. It could either build another bridge on top of the river or a tunnel below it. China chose the latter. The reason behind this decision is the same as the cause behind it, the Yellow River. This is the second largest river in the country and one of the deadliest. Throughout history, this river has been infamous for killing thousands of people and destroying everything in its way. That's why it's sometimes called China's sorrow. So to protect its infrastructure and people, building a tunnel was the safest option. The Jinan Huanggang Tunnel is a 3.6 mile affair. It's so big that it can accommodate two levels of traffic on both sides. Six lanes will run on either side with a speed limit of 37 miles per hour. Now, Jinan does have several crossings over the Yellow River, but this tunnel would be a first. Needless to say, it will be a game changer for daily commuters and how the city navigates its busy traffic. And let's not forget that it was completed in a record time. The tunnel digs through both soil and water. For the underwater portion, the engineers used one of the biggest tunneling machines in the world, the Shanhei TBM. It's roughly five stories tall and weighs as much as 500 adult elephants. As for its length, this TBM is equivalent to 16 buses laid end to end. In other words, it has enough space to allow workers to climb inside and check its operations. The cutter head has a huge diameter of 57.4 feet. During excavation, Shanhe TBM would cut across 50 to 59 feet of riverbed in a single day. That's a record for a TBM machine of this size. The two mile underwater portion was completed in just 110 days using the Shanhe TBM. Now tunnels usually take years, if not decades to be completed. Whereas China did it in a matter of three and a half months. And that's all thanks to the Shanhe TBM. It goes without saying how convenient it is for the crew to use a TBM over traditional drilling and blasting. A TBM is similar to a drill that you use at your home to create a hole in the wall. Modern TBMs can do 90% of the work. The TBM used in China's case was a shield tunneling machine. As this machine progresses, it also lines the tunnel with concrete to secure the newly dug path. Millions of cubic meters of clay, soil, and silt are removed this way. The Shanhe TBM also has an efficient flushing system to prevent clogging. A conveyor belt transports the excavated material to the back of the machine. In many cases, this material is repurposed for something entirely different. Take the example of the Channel Tunnel. This tunnel was built 30 years ago between the UK and France. On the UK side, almost 5 million cubic meters of chalk marl was excavated. Later on, it was used to create a nature reserve in Dover. The Shanhe TBM also has a telescopic camera on the cutter head. This allowed the crew to actively monitor the cutting bits without outside intervention. Given the level of convenience a TBM provides, it's no surprise why they cost so much. A TBM can cost anywhere between $5 million for a small model to over $30 million for a larger one. So yeah, the bigger it gets, the more costly it is. The biggest TBM on the face of the planet is the Twen Munchek Lapcock TBM. It was used to drill a tunnel with the same name. With a diameter of 58 feet, this TBM is a monster. It was created by the same company behind the Shanhe TBM in China. This TBM was used to create a three-mile tunnel leading to the Hong Kong International Airport. By providing a direct route, the tunnel cuts travel time from 30-40 minutes to just 10 minutes. Since this tunnel was more than 100 feet below water level, the TBM was designed to operate at a pressure of 5 bar. It even had robotic arms inside to change cutter wheels on the TBM head. 
Another robotic system was used to clean and unclog the TBM cutters. Being the largest TBM in the world, it came with a hefty price of $2.3 billion. This six-story machine was later converted to a much smaller TBM to complete the rest of the tunnel. At number two, we have the Bertha TBM. It has the exact same diameter as the Sean Hay TBM, measuring up to 57.4 feet. So you can say it's a tie between both machines. Bertha was designed and constructed in Osaka, Japan. It later arrived in Seattle to begin underground tunnel development for a double-decker highway. The TBM was named after Seattle's first female mayor, Bertha Knight Landis. When it was introduced in 2013, it was crowned as the world's largest tunnel boring machine. With a length of 300 feet and a weight of some 60 to 700 tons, it was only natural for people to call it Big Bertha. A huge machine nicknamed Big Bertha. It is the world's largest tunnel boring machine. That's the sound of Bertha reaching the end of its 1.7 mile journey. The tunnel dug by Bertha was a replacement for the Alaskan Way viaduct. However, its construction was far from simple, and that was due to an unexpected error in construction. Like most TBMs, Bertha would progress by excavating tons of rocks using its enormous cutter head. However, during its usual operation, the TBM hit an unknown object that was likely assumed to be a steel pipe. As a result, its cutting blades were severely damaged and had to be replaced. To do this, the cutter head first had to be lifted and brought to the surface. Now here comes the challenge. Bertha was buried at least 60 feet below ground, so the team had to dig an enormous shaft to access the TBM. Once that was done, the only problem was lifting Bertha's cutter head. The cutter head weighed some 2,000 tons, and lifting was as difficult as the tunnel's construction. To solve this issue, a steel gantry was built to lift the gigantic head. The gantry was supported by 48 hydraulic cylinders to do the heavy lifting in a single go. And it worked. The cutter head was then shifted to a repair saddle, and after two years, it was lowered back again. The two-year delay cost more than $200 million, but at least construction was back on track. Once the tunnel was completed in 2017, the $80 million Bertha was disassembled. In third place, we have St. Lucia TBM. It was used to create a three-lane highway tunnel in Italy. The TBM had a diameter of 52 feet and its job was to dig a five-mile tunnel through the Apennines Mountains. This made Lucia the largest diameter TBM in Europe. The tunnel serves as an extension of the A1 highway between Bologna and Florence and is one of the longest road tunnels in Italy. Construction of this route started in mid-2017 and just three years later, the St. Lucia Tunnel was open for traffic. If you like the video so far, kindly take a nanosecond to subscribe. We post two videos weekly with the latest news in construction. At number four, we have Martina. This TBM is the largest hard rock TBM that the world has seen. It has a diameter of 51 feet and was developed by the same German company, Heron Connect, that created the Shanhe TBM. Martina was deployed to dig the Sparvo Tunnel in Italy. The machine weighed a staggering 4,500 tons and was more than 400 feet long. The Sparvo Tunnel is part of a bigger project in Italy called the Variante di Valico. You see, the A1 highway between Bologna and Florence is a critical artery in Italy's transportation. The segment passing the Apennine Mountains was infamous for steep gradients, sharp curves, and frequent traffic congestion. That's why from time to time, stories like these would pop up in the Italian media. The Variante di Valico project simply provided an alternative route to the traffic. The new alignment included modern tunnels like the Sparvo in St. Lucia and bridges with advanced safety features. So hopefully Italians will have a safe and enjoyable ride from now on. It's also a matter of pride that two of the world's largest TBMs were used for the same project in Italy. Martina completed its task in just two years, setting a record at the time for the fastest completion by a TBM. But as with everything, records are broken easily. The Shanhe TBM showed the world that the same job can be done in a matter of months, and China is no stranger to this fact. Last year, the country launched the world's largest single-shield hard rock TBM. It goes by the name of Caucasus. This TBM was deployed at an altitude of 6,000 feet to drill a tunnel through the greater Caucasus mountain range. It has a diameter of 49 feet, 
just a little less than its Italian competitor, Martina. After assembling the TBM in just three months, Caucasus was tasked to dig a five-mile tunnel. It completed its assignment 30 days early. That's a rare statement in the construction industry. As expected, digging through a mountain is no easy task. It requires more force to dig a tunnel through the mountains versus under a river or lake. And that's due to the difference in geology in both scenarios. In this case, the Caucasus TBM had to navigate rocks like tuff and marl. Considering the situation, the TBM was designed to have a thrust of 22,600 tons. That's like 150 blue whales pushing at the same time. The tunnel is part of a highway project that links Kavachetti and Kobe in Georgia, China. However, there was only one obstacle on its path, the Gudauri Mountain. This area experiences frequent snowfall, which blocks the road for at least 20 days. That's a big disruption to regional traffic. To make matters worse, the road around the mountain is rugged and difficult to travel. The only sensible solution was to make a tunnel right through the mountain. In this way, the traffic can flow uninterrupted even in winter. After the tunnel's announcement in 2021, it was completed in April 2024. As part of the Kaane Highway, the tunnel will be instrumental in linking China with Russia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and other neighboring countries. Which TBM was your favorite? Comment down below. If you're interested in tunnels and how they are constructed, take a look at this video about the longest undersea railway tunnel.